Today we'll be looking at if Venus could really harbour life. If you're new to this channel, welcome! This is Mr Singularity, where we explore the scientific and technological breakthroughs shaping the future as we know it. The Earth's sister world, Venus, has not been used as a higher priority in the quest for creation. The surface temperatures of about 450 degrees Celsius is considered hostile to even the hardest of microorganisms, and its dense sulfurous and acidic environment has rendered the surface almost entirely free from spacecraft visits. We've just had the briefest impression of a desolate wasteland from the two Russian leaders who made it to the ground back in 1980. So it's no surprise that a study released in Nature Astronomy reports that the upper levels of the Venus atmosphere comprise a substance that is a possible sign of existence, and that comes as something of a shock. The molecule in question is pH free, phosphin. It is a highly reactive and flammable, particularly fragrant poisonous gas, contained, among other places, in penguin dung heaps and the intestines of badgers and fish. It is found in Earth's environment just in trace quantities, less than 100 parts per trillion, because it is easily consumed by the oxidization method. The explanation that this molecule is still present in our oxidizing environment means that it is continually created by microbes. Thus, in the atmosphere of a rocky Earth, phosphine is suggested to be a clear indicator of life. It cannot be safe in the environment of a world like Venus, where it can be oxidized instantly because, like on Earth, there is a continuous fresh supply. But why were the orphans of the study searching for phosphine in such an unpromising environment? And are they confident that they've identified it? Reading between the lines of the study, it seems like the team did not intend to find the phosphine. In reality, they seem to be consciously searching for that absence. Venus was to provide the baseline environment of a rocky world, clear of phosphine biosignature. Scientists studying rocky exoplanets will also be able to equate the atmospheres of these bodies with that of Venus in order to classify any possible phosphine biosignatures. So discovering a global molecular concentration over 1000 times greater than Earth was a surprise. In reality, it prompted the writers to create one of the most thorough forensic dissections of their own data I've ever seen. The first dataset was collected in June 2017 using the James Clerk Maxwell Telescope, JCMT for short, in Hawaii. It obviously showed the existence of phosphine, such that a second collection of data was collected using a separate instrument on a separate telescope. SES measurements were taken at a higher spectral resolution in March 2019 using the Atacama Broad Millimeter Array, ALMA for short, in Chile. Both datasets were nearly indistinguishable. Phosphine is found in the atmosphere of Venus, with a patchy distribution around the mid-latitudes declining towards the poles. So, where did it come from? Phosphine feedstock is phosphorus, an ingredient with a well-understood chemistry that underpins several potential chemical reactions. Phosphorus in the Venus atmosphere was tested by the Vega probe, former Soviet Union, and was observed to exist as an oxidized P4O6 molecule. In an effort to understand the nature of phosphine, astronomer Jane Greaves from Cardiff University and her team used evidence from Vega and modeled almost 100 different chemical reactions in the atmosphere to see how they could replicate the phosphine that they had detected. While doing so under a variety of conditions, pressure, temperature, concentration of the reactant, none were found to be viable. They also suggested reactions below the soil, but Venus would have to be at least 200 times the volcanic activity of Earth to generate sufficiently phosphine in this manner. What about a meteorite carrying the material to Venus? They also discovered this, but noticed that the results reported would not contribute to the volume of phosphine. Furthermore, there is no proof of a recent significant event that may have raised concentrations of ambient phosphorus. The team also discussed whether reactions with lightning or solar wind could create phosphine in the atmosphere, but found that only marginal amounts would be generated in this manner. Where is that leaving us then? Phosphine is found in the atmosphere of Venus at quantities far above the amount that could be clarified through non-biological processes. Could that indicate that bacteria are found in the atmosphere of Venus? Sailing through the clouds in an aerosol droplet, a micro-scale Venus flytrap? The authors do not say that they have discovered proof for existence, merely for anomaly and unknown chemistry. However, as Sherlock Holmes told Dr. Watson, after you eradicate the unthinkable, whatever remains, no matter how doubtful, must be the reality. The existence of methane as a biosignature in the Mars atmosphere is also fiercely discussed. It could be that astrobiologists hunting for existence outside Earth already have an extra atmospheric biosignature to argue over. The European Space Agency is currently proposing a trip to Venus to assess its geological and tectonic past, including the detection of hidden volcanic gases. This will give one a clearer understanding of the animals that are introduced to the ecosystem of Venus. The new research could raise the argument for task selection. If you made it this far into the video, thank you and welcome to the end of the video club. 
What's your take on this? Let me know down in the comments below and check out one of these other videos. This has been Mr. Singularity and I'll see you on the next one.